Well, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Um, I'm going to introduce some of you because some of you don't know each other. We're, we're just waiting for it. Not anymore, Matt is just right here. Um, so, um, well, thanks everyone for joining to this conversation. So, as we briefly introduced, um, Alberto is from Spain, Guido is from Italy, Cynthia for, from Italy, Matt from Mauritius, and Victoria from Sweden. And the, we all are related through Beast. And I have the privilege to know most of you, and I'm very thankful for sharing this, uh, your perspectives in this moment. So welcome, and um, please feel free to uh, unmute yourselves and mute when, like all our guests, feel free to unmute and unmute whenever you want to speak. And um, shall we start? Sure. Of course. Um, well, uh, Victoria, do you want to introduce yourself and like tell us a little bit of what what made you into this wonderful bee world? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I am Victoria Bassani. I'm I uh, am a beekeeper in uh, in the southern part of Sweden uh, since fifteen years. And um, my, my approach into bees were through honey and the wonderful flavors and different kind of flavors of honey. Um, and uh, then I discovered the bees about 15 years ago and haven't looked back since then. So um, briefly, that's it. And I met Alet at, uh, in, uh, in, um, in at the in Bologna at the at the sensory class. Thank you. Um, Alberto, do you want to speak next? Of course. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. My name is Alberto. I'm an organic beekeeper in north of Spain. Um, what is important is that um, today we have a good news in Spain regarding the origin, the origin country of the honey. Our government uh, has allowed to include in the honey jars the country of origin, uh, which is really important. Just to distinguish national, local, European, or wherever you want. So that's my good news to start. Okay, I don't have more to add. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Cynthia? Oh, this is truly good news, uh, Alberto. Uh, actually, we were waiting for, we were waiting for Spain because um, for the ones who are not uh, I mean, familiar with the, all the laws about uh, honey and, and, and labeling of honey. Um, in this moment, for the European Union, it is not mandatory to put the, or the country of origin on the label. But uh, some countries have asked to do that, which has the permission of having a more rigorous labeling. So, uh, which is the first weird things that beekeepers do. Beekeepers are weird, actually, in general, <laughs> are strange people. And they are a category who wants, who asks for more restrictive laws than what they have. Why they do that? Italy starts first and uh, Italy, Cyprus, and Greece. Um, they start first asking this several years ago because they were very uh, sure of uh, the quality of their honey and they were aware that this was an added value to the product in, in the market, in the, 
international market. And they were right, actually, because Italian honey is very um, focused on Italy, not because of anything, but because the other two countries, Cyprus and Greece, Cyprus, I mean, it's as big as my living room, so they do not produce that much uh, honey and Greece, they do produce a lot of honey, but they do not export that much. So the point was how to communicate the honey, the quality of honey when you export it. And this is why Italy was insisting very much about the uh, country of origin. Now, we happily uh, learned that Spain have joined and I think that France have done too, a few, few months ago, right? Guido? Mm, I suppose. Uh, I don't, I'm not yeah, sure. I think that they, they, they joined the, the process um, not very, I mean, or they are in the process maybe still. So this is something that of course the producers ask when they are very conscious and very sure of the quality they can assure to the market. So we are very happy for that. Um, in general, European Union has better laws uh, to protect the environment, which doesn't mean that they are perfect, but they mean that they are better in comparison with a Chinese law or US law. Uh, so it is not a, I mean, it, it is an easy race to win, but anyway, uh, we have this, um, this attention. For the first time in the history of European laws and maybe in the history of the forbidden substances, in the beginning of last year, in, in January 1919, 19, um, the European Union has prohibited a three substances not because of uh, public health, not because of human health, but because of environmental issues. So that was the first time that a, a, a synthesis production uh, used in agriculture was forbidden not because of um, to protect the environment and not to protect directly uh, the human health. Of course, they are starting to understand that when you protect environment, you actually protect also human health at the end. But first of all, you have to protect the environment. You have to protect the species that are directed, directly affected, like insects in this case. Uh, and that they are too tiny to uh, show how um, how strong it is the um, the, the impact because if you, um, you you're never too tiny to show that because uh, you just have to wait until the bigger animals like us will be impacted as well but if you don't want to go into them into that you can stop using that substance uh, when you have the first alarm and the first alarms comes from insects so this is one of the point i am i just introduced myself which was what i, I had to do maybe instead of talking about other things I am a journalist and I teach at Polenzo University and the University of Gastronomic Sciences, but I am studying and writing about bees since the 90s, more or less, the, the beginning, uh, the end of the, night, the late 90s. And, um, and I, last year I published a book for the Slow Food Publishing House, which is this one, Il Mondo delle Api e del Miele which is a kind of handbook about uh, bees and about honey with also a section on about how to use honey in, in uh, cooking. But the, the, the other two parts are about um, how the honey family works, how the honey production works, 
uh, how many and different honeys there are in in Italy uh, and the, the most common and the most rare and um, and for the first part the part in which there is uh, the, the explanation about how the honey production works um, there is a, a bee talking a, a bee uh, guiding the and explaining what is going on in their houses and their family and why they are organized in uh, such uh, a way. And when she doesn't know about um, laws or labeling or things, she gives the word to six experts that bring on this conversation on uh, the problems, the environmental problems, the climate change, the the regulations and and all this so it's a quite um uh, unusual handbook because you will not learn how to make honey from this book because they will keep doing for us and we'll very happy they will <laughs> but you will learn how they do the honey and how it works and what can what we can do to let them work in, in peace instead of fighting against them and attacking with any possible way we invent. That's it. Thank you. Um, and also one of the people that Cinzia, well, the B interviews in her book, it's uh, Lucia Piana, who taught us in Bologna. So yeah, it's, it's a very beautiful book. Um, Guido, do you want to introduce yourself, please? Here I am. I'm Guido. I want to show my, uh, my greetings also of my little B hotel. I don't know if you can see that, them? Yes. Um, they are protecting me. <laughs> um, I, want, I am a worker, a beekeeper, uh, also founder of uh, the the network of uh, urban beekeeper in Turin. And I, I like this, this, uh, this topic, but I want in my life that bees uh, will not be only a topic because uh, in my opinion is that um, uh, also Cinzia talked about uh, is that uh, the problem of, of the, the environment of bees are, is also the problem of humans. Uh, we are living the same life, uh, the same problems, and then uh, my opinion is that slow bees uh, uh, must not be only a community of beekeepers, but all people, because people uh, can uh, must know all the all of these problems. Uh, all often we. We know problems of bees because we work with bees and then we know that bees are dying because of pesticides, for example. But uh, a lot of people doesn't know of anything of this. And uh, my, my opinion is that um, we must be together without uh, any classification of, of what, are doing, what are doing me or you, if I am a beekeeper or not. Uh, I think uh, a good community, a very good community, um, born with uh, the spirit of uh, uh, know and protect uh, the, the earth and the environment. So, uh, only um, a little, a little, um, little answer to Cinzia. I don't know which countries are just. Um, trying to defend the, the label of uh, the origin of the, of the food but uh, I just I don't know if you, if you have uh, written if you have read uh, the, the, the statement of Apimondia but the last statement uh, is very important because it's focusing uh, on the uh, the method the, allo the allowed method of production of honey in the world so by controlling the, the, food, the honey uh, we can know the origin of the food, but uh, there is, a, as always, as usual, a problem because uh, in that rule uh, there is a 
um, a, a, a trick. <laughs> and the trick is that uh, you can extract pollen from the honey when you are processing the food. And this method is the first important method that China, for example, or uh, who's, uh, are not doing a good honey, for example, in, in the case, to, um, to mask, to, to deny people to, to, to recognize the origin of the, of the honey, the, the country of the honey. So uh, another focus of, for, for me is, is, to, is to, um, to remember that we are a network. We are, a, we, I am I'm Italian, okay, but uh, it's not important also to defend Italian food, but the quality of the, uh, the process of treating bees, uh, the, the environment too, but also the process of, the, of um, production of honey, because uh, this is a problem of everybody. It's not a local problem, it's a global problem. And then uh, ob obviously it be becomes uh, local if uh, I try to defend my product, but uh, uh, I am fighting with an, uh, a big producer that uh, this is importing uh, a not good food, a not healthy food, okay? Thanks. Thank you for the introduction and for the, um, the information you provided. Um, Madvi is, she just texted me, she has to go to another event of Madagascar Honeys, but as soon as she comes back, I would like you to know her as well. She has been working very, very deeply in Af uh, with African honeys and her approach, it's not only sustainability and flavor, but also social with a social impact. So um, I'm very eager to, to listen to her. So, well, um, I my, like, yes. May I ask you to introduce yourself as well and what you're doing in the world of bees? <laughs> of course. So, um, Bees is what brought me to Polenso. Um, I, five years ago, I started a project in Mexico to understand better the, the, the way bees relate to, to the environment and how poorly paid are beekeepers because they're focusing on exporting. Um, Mexico is the third exporter of honey in the world and we basically, all these, EU and non-EU honey, most of it comes from my country and it's a very high quality honey, but it's very, it's not well known, known at all. And it's also um, very poorly paid for beekeepers. So what I've been trying to do is changing perception of honey within my country and creating a new, a new story towards bees and beekeepers and yeah now i work with 12 beekeepers and um we have 18 different honeys and well that's why i attended to the honey sensory uh, class in bologna um because i wanted to understand how things work within this world because of my profession i'm a graphic designer and I had nothing to do with, I, in the past I didn't have anything to do with bees, but now I'm very, very, my life is kind of driven through bees. Yeah, that's it, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, since we all are fr from very different uh, places of the world, and also very different uh, environments. I would like to ask you, what are your, uh, what do you think of the situation of bees now during this pandemic? And what are the, the uh, challenges they are facing both in, um, in, in the urban environments, in the rural environments, and also in wild environments? And I don't know if, anyone works with wild bees? I know Madvi does, but um, we can start with urban and rural, if you will. Whoever wants to take the, the question. 
Okay, can I start? If you allow me. Um, situation of bees during pandemic. Uh, in my country, we were allowed as beekeepers to attend bees all the time since the very beginning. So we had no restrictions to go to the to the bees. Um, I don't I don't understand why this year when we are all close at home. Because the the first springtime, according to springtime, since many 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 years. Because last year we were having many problems with lack of water, lack of uh, too many degrees, hot temperatures. But this year is perfect for a beekeeper in North Spain. I don't know. It has something to do with environmental issues. I don't know. I don't know if it's the case for all of you. If this was a good spring time in your country. Do you get my point? If this spring time was perfect or like others? Well, I thought uh, quickly, for me, the same. Same, the same as you. And any reason? <laughs> any reason to have a perfect spring time this year? <laughs> Okay, I, th I think bees are just uh, trying to, to, to give back what the, last year, the year before uh, they cannot do. <laughs> so a lot of swarms, uh, a lot of honey, yes, it's very, very good, good time. I don't know Thanks. how much it lasts, it will last, but uh, it's true, it's true. Yes, many, many beekeepers in Italy in these moments, they are saying crossing whatever they can cross <laughs> but they are saying that um it is at the moment going quite well we had um well italy is very diversified with climate so it is uh, maybe already too hot in the south and and to dry, but still they are managing. And the point is that we had a so bad year last, last year, uh, when also because we had a very um, warm winter that allowed the, the bees to arrive to the spring with very huge families, but without any food anymore so they were very eager to get out and eat and they did it in april but in may we had a very mm, low temperatures and rain and really it was a cold month for being may so they had to go back to uh, their houses and they didn't have enough to eat so a lot of beekeeper had to feed the bees, which is something that the beekeepers do not love to do, and, and not even the bees love to do, to be fed. They like to go and, and, and go for their food. So uh, a couple of, um, of kinds of honey that are very popular in Italy, like acacia, they haven't been done last year, because the, which is normally very abundant, very, it's the perfect um, honey to, to, to sell, is very easy, uh, it doesn't crystallize, it's very loved from kids, it's the easiest to use instead of sugar, for example, so, and nobody did it. So this year seems to be better. We do not really have studies at the moment to say that it is going better only because of the weather or also because the air is cleaner thanks to the virus um, and we all have we all citizens we all people have the um, perception that we have a lot of more insects going around but I'm not sure that it is because there are really are more insects, more variety and, and a higher number, or it's just because we do not have anything else to do than observe our gardens and all the insects that are around because we cannot get out. 
so that maybe there are the two things together. So it is interesting. It is an interesting year and we, we really hope that things can, can go on smoothly and that we'll, th there have been a few uh, really low temperatures in some areas with freezing and, and ice, but really few cases. So seems going well. Victoria, how has it been for you in Sweden? Because you yeah. work with uh, both uh, in both environments, right? That's right. That's right. Uh, and I've spent all day today in, in the April, so I can have fresh reports. Um, now, I, I think um, in terms of the, the virus, it's just a, a blessing to be a beekeeper because we are allowed to to do what we are supposed to do at this time of year without restrictions. So that I feel very privileged. And the bees, uh, we, we had a very mild winter. So the bees were um, um, also large families to start with. And then we've had a, a few weeks of cold weather. So at the moment, uh, um, all the honey that was gathered has been eaten up, but that's all right. We start, start all over again. Uh, but my, my um, general reflection, uh, I, I've had um, bees in the like nature reserves and, uh, and in rural areas for the past 15 years. And I've um, had a, a couple of acres in urban area uh, um, for the past four years only. But, uh, I, I, and I was very hesitant to, to actually go into the city to to place hives and um, only because I wanted to the bees to fare well from it uh, but um, my um, my experience already first year was that uh, they they are actually a lot better off in the uh, urban area than in the rural areas um, I, I take it that it's the variation the and then um, um, the, all the different pollen sources that that they really um, fare well from and uh, and uh, gain um, it, it's good for their immune system or equivalent to their immune system. And that led lets me to the next question: that it's like, what does it mean to have or to buy a jar of honey, like? literally what what a jar of honey contains of course the works of bee, the, the work of bees and flowers and pollination like but i would like to hear from you like what are your thoughts around that um around a jar of honey a simple jar of honey from the beekeeper i can start uh, for me, if you buy a jar of honey, is to appreciate the work of bees and the work of the beekeeper and to enjoy that area in your mouth. I mean, the surroundings, the environmental, all of that. It's some kind of... Uh... Okay, you can think it's only honey, it's only something sweet, but I think we are fighting to to get the society to think it's more than only something sweet. Discover this bees world and discover the, the world of honeys. That's my, my feeling. May I uh, agree? I, I agree with that, that they, they, um, they should be more, more focused on that. But my, uh, my experience over the last two or three years is that more and more people do um, appreciate the honey for the health properties and they, they ask for the different kind of uh, health properties in, in uh, various kind of honeys. Um, it, it's only the last couple of years, but I see it as a good sign. Interesting. Yeah, we, we could learn we could start a kind of self-training 
on understanding how many different things we're eating and we are supporting when we buy a, a jar of honey from, from a beekeeper or, or from in a, in a shop, I mean, in a, in a attentive shop. Um, we are buying something like six millions of trees from the beehive to the flowers. We are buying these micro drops of uh, nectar that have become micro drops of honey and we are buying um, a project. We are buying lots of project. Uh, the bees know what they are going to do and why when they get out. They, they do not simple wander around looking for food. They have a project. They are um, very well organized families and they they divide their roles among each other and they, they know who must do what and when and why. So we are eating and buying all this knowledge that, that anim those animals have and that they transmit to each other from they are in their quick generation from generation they are very very they have short lives so they can uh, they teach each other what to do all not as we do of course they teach through pheromones they teach through whatever but they do they they uh, they are so well organized we are eating the next season of agriculture we are eating what the 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 following season will produce in terms of food we are eating the next season of apple we are eating the next season of um oranges we are eating the future we are we have a lot of future in a in a jar because we we have all these little uh, jobs that will that have produced the base for our future food, and this is something that we do not understand again because it is in the kingdom of tiny, so we do not see the tiny things that are going on. We do not. We are not accustomed to see and we are maybe we haven't been taught for seeing the the tiny link the tiny interdependencies the tiny um action and reaction that happen every single second in nature and we we have to be respectful of respectful of those and even if we are not aware of all of those. We have to remember that there is a part of it that we do not know, we do not even will know, but they are there. So, uh, and, and, and this is why one of my courses at the university is called Reality Matters. No matter what we think of reality and no matter how we catalog it, but reality matters for the way in which it is. And we have to give for, to consider for given that we do not know completely what is going on in the nature. So, and, and we also um, buy a lot of past, not only a lot of future, but also a lot of past. Bees are on this planet since 35 millions of years. So when we were not even projected and they were already there to make the vegetation restart after the ice or to start colonizing a place in which nothing was still alive, but they, they were there helping. So um, in, in, in any religions we have, 
a role for bees and honey, we have a mention. In any cosmogony, uh, bees are important. So they are always being considered a kind of passage from the power of sun to the material um, that we can not only touch, but we can eat. So it is so also a lot of poems and, and poets have been seduced by bees. So it is really, uh, when, when we buy a jar of honey, we are buying really uh, an entire uh, interdisciplinary <laughs> approach to, to the planet. And we should be very, very conscious of what we're doing. Absolutely. You, I really love how you put it, like we're buying past, present and future. I think that's a, a very poetic and true way of saying it. Um, Guido, do you want to add something? Especially since you are an urban beekeeper, that I think that's something super interesting. Oh, you're muted. Well, thank you. But mm, yes, uh, yes, uh, I just, I want to talk also that uh, I'm trying to, to start a, a small, uh, small uh, farmer, um, farmer market in Turin. And I want to tell you that it's very, very difficult to explain how much is, is difficult to, for us to, to talk about bees, about biodiversity because also we are eating biodiversity, we are eating uh, the identity of the place where bees are living. But um, people is not uh, more, uh, um, is very quickly when, when you want to buy, the only interest is how much it, does it cost uh, honey. And then, uh, then you, can, you cannot explain uh, so much and so, also, uh, Cinzia remember that uh, the, the, um, the good idea of, uh, of uh, provide a la label that are, are speaking about the food and the product itself, because uh, we, are, we cannot speak uh, <laughs> each other, we, we delegate in the label the, the information we cannot speak, we cannot tell, because people are very, very, very quickly, uh, all, all also is poor because the, the moment is very, is very particular. We just uh, started the last market uh, in 10 uh, of May. The, the, we are the very first uh, in Turin. And uh, it was a very good day to sell because uh, the, 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 the restriction the, the city gave us to, 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 to do the market, let the people be slow. Because uh, we, uh, in the, for the first time, we, we have, we, uh, we have uh, we had, uh, sorry, we had uh, only um, two people for only for every for every seller for every producer, and this is important because uh, because you have the time you have the time to talk about uh, what are you doing. It's not so so easy. It's not so easy for us, and uh, it's a mir it's a miracle. Okay, and uh, another another thing is that. Uh, uh, I compare uh, honey to to the last bottle of whiskey. I don't know if you, if you like it, but uh, in the north uh, there are so much uh, small uh, small companies that are closing, and when you are just uh, tasting uh, in a in a, in a tasting lab, uh, sometimes you 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 you, you know uh, uh, the last bottle. You <laughs> and people tell tell, tell you wow, oh, appreciate it because this is the last one. You can you cannot have it anymore. Okay, uh, imagine it, uh, that you are doing the same with uh, with honey. If bees uh, that just Cinzia talked about uh, are just here from a lot of a lot of a lot of years, but uh, imagine that uh, because of humans' activity, uh, next uh, I don't know. 20 years, 50 years, uh, you cannot eat the same or you cannot have the bees as, uh, as now, for example. No? Um, if bees will die, 
because of all the, the, the menaces. And then uh, you, you have to appreciate the product. You have also to know not only the, the work of the beekeepers, but also what is behind the, the, the role of bees. And uh, this is hard to explain. Okay, and uh, in urban uh, beekeeping is, uh, is very easy because when we do activities with children, with uh, students, with, uh, with, uh, with people indeed, um, they, they are just interested to the, to the topic and they reach us because we, we have uh, small activities in, in the place, in, in, in streets, in private places. And when we are doing, when we do the, these activities, uh, we, we try to focus to the, to the experience of taste, to the diversity of colors of, of honey. Because for example, another problem is that uh, now honey is just compared to sugar. Um, but we remember that uh, all, in all the Mediterranean, Mediterranean uh, and countries, uh, uh, people are just uh, ate uh, honey in, uh, in a lot of recipes, in a lot of food uh, in the last 2,000 years. Now it's not. Now people are just only eating the honey for, uh, for breakfast or also to, to add it uh, on cheese. It's just a very complex activity for, for people to, to, to mix or to do some experience with honey. But we are not remembering that honey is just a part of our story, of our identity, of our uh, uh, identity of food. And then uh, one of the, the activity we, we try to, to to, to propose, to promote, is that to 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 meet the difference, to meet the difference in taste, in, uh, um, in also liquid and uh, solid honey, crystallized honey, also the origin because Italy is very long, and then uh, we can we can try a lot of different uh, tastes, and this is important because there is the bitter honey of chestnut, there is a very sweet, uh, and uh, this is, this um, enhances curiosity in people. And you, uh, you can use this to talk of other topics uh, because of the curiosity of the people. And it's, it's very, very enjoying the, the, this, this, try, this kind of activities. So I guess I, I totally agree that um, education plays a, a very important role in if, if we want to communicate why bees matter, why honey matters, and education not in a formal sense, but in a very like curiosity-driven sense. Um, in your experience, to whoever wants to 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 speak, like what has been your your approach? towards education and taste education with your customers? Just to start, <laughs> um, for instance, in my society, I'm living in a city, 200,000 people, in a region with two million people, I, I don't see many interesting in society in discovering many things of honey. They want local honey, yes, good price, but only minority are interested in tasting the honey, discovering different honeys. It's hard. We are focusing on improving that, but we are not <laughs> a perfect society to this aspect. So hard. Well, actually, what ha I mean, I have a kind of this experience because when I meet people about honey, I am presenting my book. So normally, the people who come are already interested in this topic and they want to listen and they make a lot of questions and they want to taste so they they really want to learn a bit but i think that what we are facing today i don't know if it 
in Spain has been the same, but in Italy, for example, um, for all the 60s, 70s, and 80s, the only information that people had about the honey was coming from industry and from advertisement. And somehow, at least, they didn't forget about honey thanks to, <laughs> to them. But what they learned was that was one thing, always the same, brown fluid, and that was it, and was very good when you were sick. That, <laughs> that was more or less what everybody <laughs> knew about, about honey. And the moment in which the producers woke up in terms of communication uh, was in the 90s when the huge problems for, for honey, for bees arrived. And not only the, the policy makers were completely unaware and completely not interested, not only the big industry was very well keep to deny that they had any responsibility but also they didn't have any help from the society because the society was completely ignorant and unaware they thought that crystallized honey was um, a bad one because they were suspicious they thought that they say that they, it was made with sugar and so they didn't buy it. And at that moment in which their bees were dying, thousands of bees were dying every day and their honey was unable to um, compete with the industrial one, they realized that they had to start again from the beginning to communicate, to go into schools, to go in a, to organize in association, to organize themselves in association, to go in uh, and, and talk with people, to go in the markets. And I think that now situation is much better than it was 10 years ago. I, I know that there are still problems, but I tend to focus on on the bagel instead of on the whole. So I, I think that we have to appreciate that um, honey consumption is growing, first of all, that people look for that Italian or Sp Spanish or, or I don't know if uh, how it will go after the labeling that we, we have decided now, but um, Italian honey costs, has a higher price in comparison with the others, and still they sell it all because the consumers understand that they have to pay for quality and that if they see a price which is too low, is not a good sign for when it comes about whatever food, but, but also about honey. So maybe the ones who keep buying big quantity at low cost of low quality honey, maybe are the industry, the bakery industry, industrial, like the one they, that prepare huge quantity of, I don't know what, saying with honey on the packaging so they can uh, be very appreciated, but we don't know which kind of honey they buy, but still the simple fact that they start saying we produce our cake with honey, we produce or we produce our bread. I don't know if you have seen it. Our bread or our biscuits are bees friends. Have you seen it in the last advertisement? I'm kind of obsessed with advertisement. And uh, very often they do it because they really have a product, a, a line that is that uses specific and, and very sustainable ingredients, but very often it's just a storytelling without any story. It's just a, a telling of something that doesn't exist, but it is because the consumer are a bit 
more aware about what it, what means being be friends. So I think that situation is is improving slowly, and um, and also the general environmental awareness helps in understanding better what bees and what honey, which is the role of bees and the importance of honey. So um, I would be somehow more optimistic if possible. Perfect. Victoria, would you like to add something? You're muted. Thank you. <laughs> no, it was just so interesting to hear all this and get inspired. And, and uh, I, I agree in that uh, I think that the future looks brighter. We, uh, in this part of Europe, up, up in the north, we are still very much fighting for the, the opportunity to get the uh, country of origin on the label. Uh, and in fact, uh, yeah, we're working hard on that since 10 years. Hopefully we can join Italy and Spain in due course and France. Um, but um, but um, I think uh, I also agree with uh, Alberto in that the majority of consumers, they, they just, uh, if they are good enough <laughs> to, to want to buy local, that's enough for them. They don't really worry about the, the flavor. They just want uh, they just want honey, and it, it's a, it's a bit upsetting f for us who want to let them know that this has the flavor because of the flowers, blah 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 blah, and they really don't care. <laughs> but uh, um, uh, there are more and more people who who come and ask for for uh, that kind of information. So future looks brighter. I agree. If I may add, um, in my experience back home, uh, well, in Mexico, we own, we're, what we're trying to do is to make people eat more honey. And because we consume like 200 grams per year, so it's almost nothing. And in my experience, what I've been doing for the past four years, it's running... Mm, very informal tastings so um i pair with uh with a, a restaurant and we kind of host a, a 15 people tasting session where they can have a brunch and then we talk about every specific well not not the 18 that i mentioned before but only five we choose five so we kind of contrast them and it's very interesting the approach because no one or very few people know that honey tastes different from one to another so um and once you get them in with that engagement they kind of became become um ambassadors of bees and honey and, and it's that's something wonderful So again, I think that no, sharing and communicating wisely, it's a good, a good way to have more allies for bees and beekeepers as well. And um, last but not least, I would like to ask you, um, what do you think that anyone can do to help bees thrive? someone that it's not interested in is just curious about environmental issues. What, what do you think that if you would be able to give one advice, what would it be? Difficult. <laughs> difficult. Normally if you're not interested, difficult. Sorry, sorry. Can I speak? 
<laughs> I think we. I'd like um, to see uh, customers who 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 demand information, who want to know the origin, and and uh, that way we can build on what, what Alette mentioned too that the awareness of the differences that if they are if they are actually picky and not just go for anything then that that's uh, that's that's good for the bees because they will i think uh, choose more more uh, um, they have make uh, conscious choices and they make uh, i think more and more local choices and that's good for the bees and for the sustainability issues Can I try? Can I speak here? Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, it's very hard to, to, to answer because it, there is not uh, the, the, the magic wand uh, to, to save this. But um, uh, in December, last December, uh, after a lot of years of uh, urban beekeeping, um, we decided to change uh, our approach because uh, we are doing a loop with uh, with us, with each other, we are we are liking bees. We know a lot of bees, but uh, the rest of the city, uh, as Alberto spoke, uh, is not uh, doesn't know any of this. And then, uh, by only only thinking about the problem and and how to solve the problem is the, is not the good way to to move. Uh, we are thinking in a different way and uh, last year uh, we tried to, to, to start a small network with delegates uh, in all over the world uh, called Slow Bees, but Slow Bees, uh, in, in real, the, the, the real story is that in 2016 in Terra Madre in Turin, uh, at the, an, um, Jean Eck from Holland asked us why don't we start Slow Bees? Because we are Slow Bees. Uh, and then uh, we, try, we try to start, but it's very, very complex to, to, to connect uh, people all, all over the world because some, some has not mobile, some has not any mail, some are in the Amazonia uh, with Melipona Bees. It's very difficult to, to talk to each other. The, the solution was to, to, to create a small task, a uh, simple task, uh, to do in just in a day, just as today, for example. Last year we, do, uh, we did, we did um, this, uh, this activity, very simple, because uh, uh, plant a tree, a tree that is very clean. Uh, clean is not treated with pesticide, is not, uh, is not, is a very, natural wild organic tree that is good for bees and also also all of the the member uh, decided to to spend in this day uh, a moment a, a symbolic moment to plant a tree in a place uh, uh, in a public public place uh, and share the activity in the network because uh, imagine that we are uh, we are human but we are, imagine that we are we are a simple bee Worker bee, me are, uh, I am a, a bee. Alberto is a bee. Cinzia is a bee. Uh, we can we can be a swarm. We can be a, a, a big swarm, a big uh, a big swarm. If in the same time in the world we connect each other, talking about uh, the same activity. For example, just uh, uh, imagine what what are doing bees uh, in their house. They are doing the same activity. They are working for an, an only unique. Uh, uh, important activity. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> you you can be the queen. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, now uh, we are just closed in our houses because there is the COVID. We cannot move. We cannot do uh, any anything in the world today. It's a very sad moment because uh, we planned a lot of things today, but we cannot do anything. Uh, the, the idea uh, this year is to change, uh, to improve the concept. The concept is that we are pollinators because, uh, for example, in Turin there are small orchard, uh, organic orchard with bees inside. There are hills with bees. There are uh, wild places uh, that are protected from UNESCO with bees inside. 
uh, there are uh, also schools uh, because uh, uh, slow food in the past uh, did uh, a lot of program to do education program in schools in Turin. So in that places, uh, we are doing uh, something that is is that can improve the, the environment, can improve people, can improve relationship with people, can improve education. And if we are doing this, we are just uh, uh, do a regeneration to the, to the environment we are living into. So we are pollinators. And why I don't think that we can be as bees pollinator <laughs> together? This is, this is the, the idea of, the, of this year. And uh, the change from December is to start a new community and uh, call them uh, uh, the community of OU, OU urban pollinators because we are pollinators. If we are doing activities that are changing our city because of uh, uh, to learn uh, the, 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 the quality of, of honey, because of to learn how to prevent uh, the environment from uh, putting pesticide uh, in these months because it is denied, but uh, a lot of uh, cities in, in Italy are doing this. And uh, this is a, a very, a very big problem. So we are doing a lot of uh, important activities that can change us. Ch they can change the people, relationship with people, also environment. We are pollinators, no? Yet, there are things that whoever can do, even the ones who hate honey and they do not like it, they don't want to eat, but they want to, they can protect bees anyway because they can buy organic food, for example, without supporting an agriculture that impact on bees. And they can avoid polluting in many ways they can avoid um, being heavy on planet being having using too much plastics or too much energy or too much they can help mitigating the climate change in this way which is one of the things that bees can suffer more so if we try to be um, gentle with with the planet in general will help the bees um, very much from far let's say we can get a bit closer when we buy our food if we prefer organic food and we can get even closer when we take care of our garden or of our balconies without planting flowers and trying to, 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 to offer flowers and plant to, to the bees. Last year, when, when the situation of bees was so problematic in Italy, everybody was living <clears throat> outside a little quantity of honey for the bees, which was very kind of them, but was almost useless because if, if a bee can come till your balcony to eat honey, then she would be much happier if she could find flowers instead of honey there or water. So, um, and when we take care of our garden, avoiding any chemical, a lot of chemicals are used also in the private gardens because we cannot stand the presence of whatever insects, we have a very problematic relationship with insects, we as a humanity. We have spent millennia trying to get rid of them, to get rid of them on our body, in our houses. We, we wanted to eliminate, uh, we didn't want to see them. And so there are a lot of people that are still very much committed in this, um, in this uh, opera. So, uh, there are really a lot of things that we can do in our everyday life. Um, and if we ask ourselves, uh, would, would be the bees happy uh, before doing something? Maybe we end up answering also to the question about ethics, to the question about environment. If the bees would be 
happy with us, maybe we are behaving really good. So that could be another way of seeing it. Well, thank you. I, we, I should leave. I have another live about bees. Today is the day, so I should yeah. leave in you know, a little while. Well, uh, if anyone has any question, you can pop it out now. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining and for sharing this day with us, with UNIT community. And um, Hilda, do you want to add something? Yes, thank you very much to all our guests. It's been a pleasure to hear all of your voices and I'm happy to see so many students joining and just thank you very much. I've never celebrated the World Bee Day before. I didn't know it existed. So also thanks to this, I now know and I know a lot more about bees and beekeeping than I did an hour ago. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. It's just the third year of the World Bee Days. So. Where it not, it's not too late to start celebrating. <laughs> it's a recent celebration. Well, take care and have a very good season for the beekeepers. <laughs> take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Ciao, Alberto. Ciao. Ciao, Ciao everybody. Ciao. 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 Gracias. Ciao. Yeah. Ciao. Grazie a lei.